Hi guys, let's look at the next set of homework questions for exercise 12a. We are on question 12. It says in trapezium ABCD, AB is parallel to BC. So let me just draw a rough diagram. AB is parallel to BC. Done. And let me just join them as well. This here and this here. So this is A, B, C and D. These sides are parallel. Next, P and Q are midpoints of AD and BC respectively. BP produced meets CD produced at E. So I am joining BP and I will be increasing the length of CD as well. Okay, so somewhere like something like this. This is P, this is Q, DP and AP are given equal, CQ and PQ are given equal. Next, uh, prove that P bisects BE. Well, this is E. I need to prove that P bisects E, which basically means that I have to prove that P is the midpoint, which means PE and PB are equal. And part two, I have to prove that PQ is parallel to AB. Done. So PQ parallel to AB will not be too difficult if I can get P as midpoint of this big triangle. If I look at big triangle BCE, if P is the midpoint of side B and uh, Q is already given, then I will be able to prove that PQ is parallel to BC, which in any case is parallel to AB. Perfect. So the second part should be a difficult. Let's look at how should I solve the first part. So let's look at these two triangles, uh, triangle EDP and ABP. This angle and this angle are equal. Why? Because these are uh, vertically opposite angles. This angle and this angle are equal. Why? Because these are alternate angles and PD and PA are already given equal. So which means by angle side angle, I should be able to prove that these two triangles are congruent. So let me just write that down in triangle EDP and triangle BAP. Number one would be angle EDP is equal to angle B. A, P. Reason being alternate angles are equal. Done. Number two would be DP is equal to AP. Why? Since P is midpoint of AB. This is given. And number three would be angle DPE is equal to angle APB. Reason vertically opposite angles are equal. Done. So I have been able to prove that these triangles are congruent, which means if the triangles are congruent, that means that I have got by CPCTC, I should be able to say that PE and PB are equal. So let's just write that down. So therefore, by a S A test triangle E D P is congruent to triangle B A P, which means E P is equal to B P. This is C P C T C. Therefore, P is midpoint of B E or P bisects BE. This is what they wanted us to prove. We've already proved that now. So this is point number six for us. Next, I need to prove that PQ is parallel to AB, which we discussed verbally earlier. So now in triangle BEC, number seven is Q is midpoint of BC. This is given. Number eight is P is midpoint of BE. We just proved this. So this is from number six. Therefore, using midpoint theorem, I get number nine, which is PQ is parallel to EC, which is nothing but extended DC. And number 10 is DC is parallel to AB. This is given. So from 
9 and 10, I get PQ parallel to AB parallel to DC. This is what they wanted us to prove. This is point number 11, hence proof. Now, interesting question. Let's look at the next question. The next question that we do is question number 15. In question number 15, it says triangle ABC. AD is the median. So let's just draw a rough diagram again. Okay, so this is my rough diagram. This is A, B and C. AD is the median. Okay, so let me just draw a median. Median bisects the opposite sides into equal parts which means BD and CD are given equal. Next, DE drawn parallel to BA. Okay, so DE is drawn parallel to BA. It meets AC at point E. So this is point E and what is given is this is parallel to this. We need to show that BE is also a median. Ah, okay, so we need to show that BE is a median. A median would mean that it is a uh, line from B, a uh, line starting from point B, which means the opposite vertex is dividing it into two equal parts, which means basically we need to prove AE and CE are equal. So even if I don't draw this, I think my answer will be done. I need to prove that AE and CE are equal. In any case, just let's just draw. Okay. We, we won't need this line in the question. I don't think we need it. So let's start writing what we have. So in triangle ABC, I can see a midpoint and I can see a line parallel, which means I can apply converse midpoint theorem. So number one, D is midpoint of BC. This is given. And number two is DE parallel to AB. This is also given. So using converse midpoint theorem, I get number three, which is E is midpoint of AC. So since E is midpoint of AC, therefore BE is a median. Now, that's what they wanted us to prove. So we've been able to prove BE is a median, hence proved. Done. This was a very simple question. Let's look at the last question, which was homework for you, which is question number 16. Just open that file. Question number 16. Question number 16 says, in triangle ABC, E is midpoint of median AD. Let's just draw a rough diagram. Okay, so this is triangle ABC. E is the midpoint of median AD. So let me just draw the median AD, which means it's dividing BC into two equal parts, which means BD and CD are equal. And E is the midpoint of AD. So somewhere here should be point E. So this should be point E. Next, BE produced, so we are joining B and E. BE produced meets AC at point Q. So this is point Q. I need to show that BE is to EQ is 3 is to 1. Okay. So let's see what all information I have. Uh, if I need to use midpoint theorem or a converse midpoint theorem, I need to have a midpoint. So I have in fact two midpoints. So if I look at the big triangle ABC, I have a midpoint, but I am not joining it to any other midpoint. And I don't have a line starting from D which is parallel to somewhere. So then I can't use this. Let's look at the smaller triangle. In the smaller triangle ABQ, again, I don't have a, I have a midpoint, but there is no parallel line or it's not joining anywhere. Which means if I have to use midpoint theorem, I will either have to make another midpoint which either joins D or midpoint which joins E somewhere. Or I'll have to create a parallel line, parallel from E or parallel from D. So let's start looking at the big triangle first. Let me draw a line parallel. So let me draw a line parallel to E or uh, BQ. Why am I doing this? I'm doing this because I have one midpoint and I will have a line parallel to BQ. It should help me apply something. Let's try. So let's call this point point Y and let's draw a line 
parallel to BQ. Why did I do this? Because I needed a, to apply midpoint theorem, either I need a parallel line or I needed the second midpoint which would be joining B. I didn't have either. So that's why I created a parallel line on my own. So let's start writing. Let's write the information that we have. So the first information that I have is BD is equal to CD which is equal to half of BC. This is given. Next thing that I know is AE is equal to DE which is equal to half of AD. Both of these are given. Next is what we have constructed. Construct dy parallel to BQ which means to meet AC at point Y. So I have created a parallel line on my own. Let's see how it helps me. Now let me look at this small triangle BQC. Let me look at this triangle BQC. So in this triangle BQC, I have a line which is, I have a midpoint of BC and I have a line which is parallel to BQ. Let's see how this would help me. So in triangle BQC, number four would be D is midpoint of BC from one and number five dy is parallel to bq this is from construction we've done this construction on our own which means using converse midpoint theorem i get number six which is y is midpoint of cq y is midpoint of CQ. What it basically means is CY is equal to QY which is equal to half of CQ. That's what it means. And number seven I get DY is equal to half of BQ. This is the point that I get. DY is equal to half of BQ. Next let's look at now the triangle so I have got that QY and CY are equal. Now let's look at the second triangle which is ADY. Let's look at this triangle. Why am I looking at this triangle? Because I already have a pair of parallel line in this triangle and I have a midpoint. So let's look at this triangle. So in triangle ADY, number 8. E is midpoint of AD. This is from 2, already given. And number 9, EQ, which is nothing but part of BQ, is parallel to DY. This is from construction. We constructed it like this. So again, I can use converse midpoint theorem. So using converse midpoint theorem, I get number 10 which is EQ is uh, equal to half of DY and number 11 Q is midpoint of AY. Let's see how can I use this information. Uh, since I have nothing to do with AY, so basically I will not be using this information. Let's try and see if I can get something from EQ is equal to half of DY. So I got EQ is equal to half of DY and I got DY is equal to half of BQ. Ah, so let's combine number 7 and 10. So from 7 and 10, let's see what I get. I will get EQ is equal to half of dy but instead of dy I have half of bq right so eq is equal to half of dy and dy is equal to uh, half of bq so this means I will get 4 times eq is equal to bq 
So 4 times of EQ is equal to BQ. Let's just rewrite this. 4 times EQ is equal to what is BQ equal to? BQ is equal to BE plus EQ. I think I have got my answer which means 4 EQ minus EQ is equal to BE which means 3 EQ is equal to BE. They wanted a ratio which means BE is 2 EQ now would be equal to 3 is to 1. BE upon EQ is equal to 3 is to 1 which is the ratio that they wanted. So hence Done. Very interesting question. The key in this question was to realize that we had, do not have any second midpoint with which either D is getting uh, joined or E is getting joined. Neither was a parallel line given. That's the reason we decided to con construct a parallel line. That finishes the homework questions. Hope you liked the video and you understood the explanation. Take care. Be safe. If you have any other queries, feel free to write to me. Bye-bye.